Hey friends, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to talk to you about table view diffable data source. Alright, so as you can see, I've commented the code out here and I want to show you what this API is all about. So if you come over to the uh, Apple developer website over here, you see that uh, there's this video that's covered in WWDC 2019. And I realized that not many developers are using this diffable data source. And some of the advantages is that it simplifies the UI state, there's automatic animations, no more batch updates, and a bunch of pretty uh, robust features over here. All right, so you can check this out at your own time. And I wanna show you how uh, you can actually apply that to your uh, existing project or if you're creating new table views, okay? So as you can see right here, I have this um, table view controller. So let me just quickly run this to show you a demo of um, how this works. Okay, so we have a search bar over here and then I'm gonna type something over here. Maybe let me just type in love and then we uh, fetch an API call with a bunch of results and we, we just display them inside this table view cells. All right, so if I am to, you know, maybe just uh, backspace, you notice that there's some kind of debounce effect as well. WA, I'll get, uh, do, I, do I see anything? Maybe WAR, wall, and then uh, Avengers maybe. Do I see anything? Um, Yep, okay, so as you can see, um, uh, after a, a split second, it makes the API call again, depending on what I type inside the search text view. Okay, so I want to show you uh, how you can actually convert the existing um, UI table view delegate methods into the diffable data source. Okay, so, so let me just run through the project over here. Okay, not sure why the images here are not loading. Um, anyway, so over here, let's uh, look at what we have inside uh, the files. Okay, so I have a controller. Uh, which is this one over here, which is a UI table view controller. I have a table view cell, very simple, which has a image view, a title, and a year. That's why you can see image view, title, year, and then we pass in a movie uh, object, a strut, okay? And then inside the main uh, dot storyboard, it's very, sim uh, it's very simple. We have a navigation controller that points to the table view controller. Okay, so let's walk through uh, what we have over here. So we have a table view controller here. Okay, this is actually part of the um, UR diffable uh, data source structure. So I'm going to comment this out. We have a search controller here. We have a couple of publishers. We have the movies uh, array. Okay, uh, notice that this is published, which means that this can emit um, uh, information. So we have some kind of uh, subscription over here, which is the cancelables. And of course, because we are doing search, we have a search text which is of type string optional. Again, this is also a publisher because it can uh, emit the information as uh, the user starts, starts typing things into the text view. Okay, so what we have here inside load view, we call the observe function. So observe, you can think of it like, you know, some kind of binding. Uh, where's my observe? My observe is over here. So uh, basically uh, I observe this search text and every time uh, it changes, uh, you know, we have some kind of debounce over here and then I do some filter to ensure that we're not sending an empty text and then we perform this uh, this function called uh, search movies and we pass in the query, which is the search text, okay? So what else? Uh, inside the observe, that's pretty much it. Inside view, the load, uh, the typical things over here, we assign uh, self to its uh, data source and delegate and then, you know, we put the search controller as part of the navigation item as well as just the uh, navigation uh, bar title over here. Okay, inside here we have this search movies um, function over here uh, and we pass in a title. So this is a FVC architecture. So we create the uh, URL and uh, I use this URL components to uh, pass in those uh, uh, query params over here so that we don't run into uh, problems when you know we have spaces and things like that, okay, or special characters. So we can avoid that by just using the URL components uh, um, uh, object here. And then I'll just return the URL. So this uh, is the uh, OMDB API that I'm using. Okay, I pass in the search term, which is a title, as well as the API key. Again, uh, you can just get this API key if you wanna play around with this. Uh, you can copy mine if you want to, or you can just go to OMDB API uh, and just register one for yourself. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, and then we make an API call um, using the URL session data task publisher, which means I'm using combine. And then I decode this into the movies uh, response. And then uh, when I get back uh, uh, the information, I'll just uh, set that to the movies uh, property uh, order at the top. Okay, so let's just jump into that. All right, which is currently a uh, an array of a movie currently it's blank because you know when you load the controller for the first time there's nothing inside right okay what else um and then over here uh, the search text i've mentioned about that 
and then uh, when the movie's um, property is being populated all I do is just reload the table view so I think that should be pretty easy to understand so I create an extension over here and then it, uh, this is all pretty self-explanatory as well we uh, define the table view cell height we return the number of rows in the section and then we have the cell for row to point uh, to the table view cell that we want to use to render this uh, movie items all right and finally uh, this table view controller conforms to a uh, search result updating so that every time we type in something uh, we are getting the uh, whatever text that we have over here and we are just assigning it to the search text which is the uh, the publish uh, property over here which is a string optional okay so uh, this is how we do it so um, yeah okay so now i want to show you how you can just convert this to the table view uh, diffable uh, api so uh, uh, first thing we don't really need the delegate the data source so we can just remove this and then um, inside over here in fact we don't need any of this here okay maybe i think we need the height for row uh, number of rows and section we don't need that cell for row we don't need that okay so we can just get rid of this okay it makes the code a lot more concise and then uh, what we need to do is to define some kind of data source over here so the way uh, that diffable um, uh, this diffable api works is that it actually checks it actually uh, refreshes your table view according to to the snapshot so you can think of snapshot as um, an image of how the uh, table view contents should be laid out okay so what you need to do is to create some kind of data source over here so if you can see private lazy variable data source and this will be of type ui table view diffable um, data source and over here we need to uh, put in two things over here we need to put in some kind of section and this section is an enum all right so where this comes in is if your table view has multi if your table view has multiple sections then this is where uh, this will really come in handy okay because you can uh, you, you know most of the time what what um, we do uh, when we have when we're dealing with multiple um, uh, sections is that you know we do things like uh, if uh, index path uh, dot section equals to zero then do this uh, else uh, if index path dot section equals to one then we do this or we, we kind of use some kind of enum to sim uh, to sim uh, to symbolize this all right so um, the diffable uh, api kind of takes care of that already so you just define a section and then inside this section since it's just all movies i'm gonna just use uh, the case movie over here and then this part over here uh, has to be the uh, the item all right or the model that will be populated inside your table view cell okay so this movie let's jump into this this will be the model layer so as you can see uh, now where am i i'm inside this uh, model folder over here so we have the movies response so this is what we get back from the uh, um, omdb api okay it returns to us uh, an array of uh, results okay and uh, i just uh, add in a couple of uh, simple properties over here not to complicate things too much okay so we uh, initialize this and then this is the part where it looks very similar to uh, the cell for row okay except that we have this item over here and this item will be exactly what you specify over here all right so if let's say this is a some kind of string then uh, this item will be of type string okay so let me just undo this so what we do is that we um, we create the cell we dequeue the cell a uh, very straightforward stuff and then inside the cell we can uh, just pass this item which is movies into this cell so if we if we are to jump into this movie table view cell you notice that inside the configure method this item is of type movie okay so over here what we do is that we just uh, set the image using sd web image set the uh, title which is this one here as well as the year okay so pretty simple stuff here okay so this is how we create the data source okay and uh, as well as we need this uh, enum over here okay so let's see what else do we uh, need okay so we have to use this function called uh, apply snapshot okay so we have to create some kind of snapshot over here and then the snapshot will take the same signature section and movies and then we have to append uh, the section so uh, the section we have is only movies and then we append the items which is movies okay so this movies is basically the array of a movie object okay and then all we need to do is to call data source dot apply snapshot and then inside this um 
parameter over here animating differences if you set this to true every time you do a search you know you'll have some kind of wacky animation to kind of uh, animate the differences so it kind of looks a bit too overkill for me so i'm just gonna set this to be false okay so i think uh because uh, i'm using the diffable uh, api now i don't really need this one i don't have to observe this anymore so i'm going to remove this so notice now we don't need to reload the, ta uh, the table view Okay, but what I do need to do is that once I set this, once my uh, API response is being returned, I do have to apply the snapshot. Okay, so I think I can just remove this thing over here. And then I think that's pretty much all I need. So let me just rerun the project and let's see if this is working for us. Okay, so um, okay, so let's start by typing in Marvel. I think that's how you spell it. Am I getting anything? All right, I'm, got, I'm getting it over here. And then uh, if I'm to do um, maybe like bat, let's see, and then maybe a man that returns maybe. Oh yeah, okay, so it's kind of it's kind of working for me. All right, guys. Uh, oops, it looks like uh, what is this? <laughs> it must be caught for the main thread. Okay, so maybe inside. Uh, let me see. Apply snapshot. Hmm. I think this is the part where I need to. Um, fix that so what I can do is before I call sync I can do receive on and then dispatch queue.main I think this should solve the problem let me just quickly rerun this okay so uh, maybe Lego let's see if uh, this is good Lego and then Batman all right, so it looks like uh, yeah, it's it's refreshing by itself. You don't have to be calling uh, table view reload. And I think uh, one of the beauty of this is that uh, once you set up your snapshot correctly, you don't have to you know specify like the rows or the sections or the particular yeah the particular row and section to refresh because the snapshot kind of takes care of that. All right, again, uh, this is not a very comprehensive video, but more of an intro of what the Diffable uh, API looks like. You know, feel free to check out. Maybe I'll just put this link inside if you want to um, re uh, check out this uh, 11 minute video. I think if you have more um, complex use case, then this will really become very handy. Otherwise, to me, it kind of looks like synthetic sugar, but I'm pretty sure there are more use cases for this uh, new API. All right, I hope you like this video and uh, I'll end off here and uh, I wish you all the best and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.